Are there constructive things that you can do to help restore a culture of life? Find out next on this edition of Life Matters. Brian Johnston is the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee. He has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. It's your program on life, on culture, and the very real battle of ideas. I have a very special guest on with us again, Sylvia Amarito. And Sylvia has a very important project. It's actually a partner with Life Matters, and that's the Power of Seven. And so we're so blessed to the Power of Seven. Sylvia, how many downloads have you had so far just since your partnership? Actually, since we partnered with you, Brian, we have had about a thousand downloads of the Power of Seven app. So we are just thrilled with the response that we're getting partnering with you and Life Matters. It's just very exciting. And of course, we love that number. We'd like to get it to be higher. Why not? Yes, 5,000 at least. 5,000 would be awesome. And when you download the app, The Power of Seven, that's the number seven, and you can get it at thepowerofseven.org. You know, just do a quick rating on it because that helps keep it, you know, higher in the rankings on both Mm -hmm. um, in Google Play and at the App Store. So we appreciate that. But thank you It's great partnering with you and your awesome listeners, Brian. Well, we really enjoy it because you want to do what we want to do, and that's equip individuals for this battle of ideas, the Mm -hmm. battle for life. And Mm -hmm. it isn't just foggy ideas. It isn't just things you're thinking. This is a real battle, and lives are actually won or lost by your engagement. And what I like about the Power of Seven, it equips an individual that hasn't been around this a whole long time. Maybe you are very pro-life, but you don't know how to present the issue. This is such a great tool to quickly get the message across. You had some ideas right now for this fall time of year, Sylvia. Tell us about that. Going on right now across the country, what am I saying? It's worldwide. It's the 40 Days for Life, the fall campaign, Mm -hmm. where we pray for an end to abortion. That's a powerful event to take part of, whether you're praying in front of the abortion mill or you're praying at home. Either way, those prayers are powerful and needed. If you're in front of the abortion mill as part of a 40 Days for Life prayer campaign, the goal is to pray. That's why we're there. However, that doesn't mean that you may not be approached by someone Mm -hmm. who is a pro-abortion advocate or a woman in a crisis pregnancy. And if that situation's in front of you and you're scrambling on what am I going to say, well, this is a perfect app to have on your smartphone or tablet because, as Brian said, it gives you those quick, simple, effective pro-life replies to pro-abortion and arguments. Mm -hmm. It's the power of seven, the number seven, the power of seven dot org. You can get the app at that location. And David B. Wright, Mm -hmm. who is the co-founder of 40 Days for Life, has enthusiastically endorsed the app, the power of seven. So Mm -hmm. we've got his stamp of approval. And that just means the world to us because the power of seven was created by Audio Girl Ministries. And our ministry has hosted 12 different 40 Days for Life prayer campaigns. So it's great to get that stamp of approval from David. Oh, sure. And your work is so important. Again, we have to encourage your friends and neighbors to understand what's at stake. Listeners to Life Matters know that We actually think that the Roe versus Wade decision is going to be overturned in the relatively near future. But you need to know that when that happens, this isn't over. In fact, that's merely the beginning of the very real battle in every state. Because before Roe versus Wade, every single state in our nation said that that child in the womb was worthy of protection at some point in his or her young life. And we're going to have to do that again. That means your friends and neighbors are going to have to really understand what this debate's about. And the power of seven is there for that. And like you were saying, Brian, the pro-abortion advocates are not going to go down without a fight. This is a battle. It's a battle of, you know, on our level here in the flesh, and it's a battle of good and evil. And that's why you need those prayers, but you need the information as well. And you can get Mm -hmm. that with the power of seven. Like, let's say, for instance, somebody comes up to you, family or friends, and says, well, an abortion should be legal in cases of rape or incest. You hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. The power of seven gives you replies to that argument. So you'll have them right there at your fingertips. Or if somebody he says to you, yes, you're right. You know, that's what we need more people in the world. You know, what about overpopulation? Abortion yes. takes care of that. 
those are nonsense arguments from the pro-abortion side. And we give you effective pro-life replies to those arguments. So you're ready to go. That's just two of the five. And then we have actually a bonus one in there too for you. <laughs> That's great. No, it really is useful and we're using technology. It's very important that we use the technology at hand. Listeners to Life Matters know that the facts are on our side. And like we like to say here, the facts are terrible things to waste. So this isn't just about your conviction. It's important that you have convictions on life, but it's about something that's outside of you. These are objectively true facts. These are self-evident truths. And so you can point to those. Those facts are what we want to reinforce. We want the laws to once again do what they were designed to do, which is to protect those that cannot protect themselves and that's, that's why this battle is on us, and that's why what Sylvia has done through Audio Girl Ministry and the Power of Seven is just so awesome. And Thanks, Brian. I, yeah, we are we, called, once you know the truth, you know, the good Lord calls us to speak up. And if we don't, then it's hard to think of it that way. But if you don't speak up, and if you don't take an active role, once you know the truth, then mm-hmm. you're kind of part of the problem. That's right. We can't be silent. You cannot, cannot. be silent if you know something is wrong and is evil, and you're silent, then you have a degree of accountability. So, Amen. Sylvia, <laughs> it's just always a pleasure to have you on. We well, really thanks, appreciate Brian. It's, your it's... work, and we'll talk again soon. I hope so. And uh, Life Matters listeners, thank you for downloading the app. And if you haven't gotten it yet, please go there as soon as you can. If you're driving, wait. If you're at home, get it right now. It's The Power of Seven, the number seven, thepowerofseven.org. That's a page on our website, and there's links there for both Google Play and the App Store to make it nice and easy for you. Yes, powerofseven.org. Let's get the downloads up. We're over 1,000. Yep, Let's get to 5,000 next. Yes, thepowerofseven.org. It loves Life Matters. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Sylvia. Life Matters continues after this. Power, power, power. You're pro-life and you want to defend your position, but you're not sure what to say. That's pretty common. So get the facts you need to back up your pro-life position with the Power of 7 app. The Power of 7 gives you effective pro-life replies to seven of the most common pro-abortion arguments. It's simple, it's easy to use, and it's free. Download it now at thepowerof7.org. The Power of 7, the number 7.org. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. For your program on the right to life, on the cultural implications, and on the very real battle of ideas. I'm really pleased to have Karen Cross back with us. Karen Cross is the director for political action for the National Right to Life Committee. And I know many of you, we've spoken in the past about this, many of you get nervous about politics, and you shouldn't. In an earlier program, Karen explained how she only wanted to be involved in helping young mothers and those babies. And we understand that, because babies are awesome. They're human beings, the most vulnerable of human beings. And by nature, when we see that, and you know, there's been studies done, I won't go into a lot of it, but even men who would not have that mothering instinct They say that the lowest reaction, everybody reacts to a picture of a baby positively, but the lowest is between young men 16 to 36, but even they have a response, and that is a protective attitude. And so when we see a child, when we understand what a child is, we want to protect them, but if our laws are not protecting them, then they're not protected. And so Karen got involved in the political aspect when she saw that a West Virginia lawmaker was thwarting every pro-life law proposed. And she changed things there. And we're very pleased to have Karen back on again to talk about how you can change things right where you are. Karen, good to have you. Good to be here. You know, last time I was on with you, I talked a little bit about how the very first thing, my first response when I got involved in this issue, when I became involved in the pro-life movement, was to say that I would do anything at all to help women and their babies. Just don't ask me to get involved in politics. And like you said, I learned better when I found out how many lives could be saved with pro-life legislations. That's when I got hooked on politics. Mm -hmm. I mentioned before that in South Carolina alone, there are more than 160,000 babies alive today because of the pro-life legislation passed in that one little state. And on just the one piece of federal legislation, the Hyde Amendment, Mm -hmm. is attributed to saving 2 million lives. That's 2 million people alive today because of that one 
piece of pro-life legislation. However, in order to pass that pro-life legislation, we have to elect pro-life legislators, That's pro-life right. leaders, pro-life lawmakers. Exactly. I do want to, before, again, very important premise, and in our earlier program, Karen went into detail about how the laws themselves are there to protect lives. That's the reason we have laws, by the way, to protect the lives of the vulnerable. A good friend of both of ours, Michael New, professor, he's been a professor at Stanford, I believe he was at Princeton for a while. Dr. New has done extensive studies that show this across the board, that wherever pro-life laws are put into place, they save lives. By the way, I do know many people, they like to stand in front of clinics, and that's fine. I know children that have been saved from in front of abortion clinics, and that's a good thing. One life, that's significant. But there are tens of thousands every day that are at risk. And it's the laws that historically did that. We live in a society that allows us to impact laws. So please realize you must focus on the laws because if we don't, we won't end this Holocaust. If we do, we can. And we're well on our way to doing that. But there's still some stumbling blocks when it comes to getting the right people in office. And Karen, I've asked to talk specifically about that now and electing those people who will change those laws because there's some challenges that you need to understand. So, Karen, tell us about some of these principles in electing pro-life legislators. One of the things I'd like to share with you is what I call six ways to defeat a pro-life candidate. And people say, what do you mean? Well, we need to be careful. I mentioned that in order to pass pro-life legislation, we have to elect pro-life legislators. Because that legislation saves lives, we need to be careful in our pro-life zeal not to defeat pro-life candidates. Mm -hmm. So in our own pro-life zeal, wanting to save lives, we could actually help defeat pro-life candidates. So what is that? What can we do? One of them is, I see this often, fall in love with your candidate. How do you mean? Um, By all means, pro-life individuals should work to elect your candidate. But if he or she loses a primary, you know, we'll have primaries. Well, you guys have that top two system, but at any rate... We'll try um, to change that. You're right. California's a challenge, yes. In a primary, there's often a very strong pro-life candidate. That happens right. a lot. Mm-hmm. But there may be multiple pro-life candidates, right. and your candidate may not win the primary, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. But we can't be like the child who loses a game and takes his toys and go home. It takes an enormous effort to elect pro-life candidates. Mm-hmm. We're often working, and especially in places like California, we're, we're working against a biased media. Yes. So it's important that pro-life candidates have the active support of all pro-lifers. Yes. I'm in Northern Virginia, and I recently talked with a woman. We have a gubernatorial race going on right now. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a woman whose candidate did not win in the primary. She would go door to door for that candidate. She was just very enthusiastic. Well, there's another pro-life candidate who actually won. Ed Gillespie won. And he is pro-life, but her candidate didn't win. And so she's that Mm -hmm. she might vote for the candidate who won the primary, even though it's clearly a pro-life versus pro-abortion race. So sadly, if she and others like her don't do what they can to elect the pro-lifer, there's a good chance that the pro-abortion candidate is going to win. That's right. That does not protect life. Karen, you're exactly right. I think every listener will remember back. I know, I'll be honest with you, for the presidency in 2016, I had several candidates I would go for one or the other as they lost. And to be honest, I've come to really appreciate President Trump very, very much. But at the time, I was not taken with him. But when it came down to it, when all the other pro-life candidates were gone, he was our man. Some people have said he may not be a man for all seasons, but he's a man for this season. And it's very important if you have a pro-life candidate and they're up against a pro-abortion candidate, please don't be a sour grape kind of person that says, well, my favorite person didn't win, so I'm quitting. Very important. And I know people who are watching the national level. If Hillary Clinton had been elected, it's unimaginable the situation we'd be in. Like, well, we wouldn't have yeah. Gorsuch That's for, right. as a Supreme Court nominee. That's one of the most important things we can do to protect life right now is to get people on the court who will 
protect life. That's right. And who will recognize that there isn't a right to abortion found in our Constitution, for That's instance. Right. That's right. Karen, tell us so the other uh, the other things. Here's, here's another one. That was yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, believe that your candidate is the only real pro-life candidate in the race and bash other pro-life candidates. And or if, say, there's a candidate who maybe has a vote he didn't vote right on and then attacking him. So you have a candidate who has, say, a 93 percent record and he's running against a pro-abort. Attacking the pro-life candidate is not being really pro-life because he has voted wrong at one point. Mm. By doing this, the pro-lifer demoralizes other pro-lifers. It weakens enthusiasm for the pro-life candidate who wins the primary, if that candidate wins. And actually, most people believe Ronald Reagan was a pro-life president. Oh, yeah. And he was. Oh, very. Yet you know that in 1967, as governor of California, he signed a bill to liberalize California's abortion laws that resulted in millions of abortions. Mm -hmm. Now, he soon regretted that decision that he made, deeply regretted that decision. And in fact, in 1980, National Right to Life successfully helped elect Ronald Reagan for president. And that made a difference in protecting lives. Exactly right. Here's another one. This is a third one. Expect the candidate to sound like a right to life chapter chairman. Mm. This one's always amazing to me Mm because they do. I hear people complain. Well, you know, he doesn't know how to he doesn't say this or that, you know, but you and I know the pro-life lingo. You know what I mean? We know what to say and what not to say. Many candidates will do what's right when they're elected. But that doesn't mean they're comfortable or eloquent talking about the killing of unborn babies. Some of our strongest pro-life elected officials whose actions have helped to save hundreds of thousands of unborn babies aren't actually even articulate on pro-life issues. That's a good point. And what we need to remember, our words are nice, but action is better. That's right. Here's a fourth one. Mm -hmm. Expect the candidate to make abortion the top issue in the campaign. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you know, in California, you can't have a single issue pro life candidate. That's when. right. That's right. The candidate, you know, let's look at 2016, last year. In 2016, 49% of voters considered the issue of abortion when they voted. That's huge, by the way. Yes, it is. Nearly one in two voters considered the issue of abortion when they voted. Of those, 31% voted for the pro-life candidate Mm -hmm. and 18% voted for the pro-abortion candidate. The life issue netted a 13-point advantage among those voters who considered abortion when they voted, which is absolutely fabulous. And, you know, we've been doing polling since 1980, and we've, in election after election, the life issue, the pro-life issue, being pro-life is an advantage for a candidate. However, in order for a candidate to win, he or she has to focus on a broad range of issues that will appeal to a broad variety of voters. That's right. So we in the pro-life movement, it's our task to make sure our friends know the pro-life candidate's position on life. That's what we're here to do, right. is to make sure people, that's why all your listeners need to make sure their friends and their family and those at their church, that they know who the pro-life candidates are. Exactly. Here's another one. Keep going. Vote for a third-party candidate Oof. who has no chance of winning. Terrible. Terrible idea. It is. There are times when a third party candidate gets into the race claiming to be the quote unquote real pro lifer. Right. He attacks the pro life candidate and gets other pro lifers to jump on board. This will elect the pro abortion candidate. I don't know if you remember back in 2008 in Minnesota, there was a Senate race. Mm hmm. Al Franken, pro-abortion Senator Al Franken, he wasn't a senator back then, just a comedian, defeated pro-life Senator Norm Coleman by a few hundred votes out of 2.8 million votes cast. That's about seven thousandths of a percent. That's one voter in every 13 precincts in Minnesota. Wow. Third-party candidates received 17% of the vote that year. That Can you so imagine? Painful. I mean, just right now, if we didn't have Al Franken, oh, it's um, incredible. And we'd even, be that much closer to being because that sixty vote filibuster proof majority is so difficult to get to sixty right now. Which is why twenty eighteen is going to be really crucial across the nation. And I know many of your listeners are in California, and it's very frustrating and difficult mm-hmm. to elect. Right, we'll be targeting key districts in eighteen, and, and oh, listeners. and there are a number of yes, congressional districts oh, right. that 
that yeah. are vulnerable, that need protection in California. So we'll hopefully be able to talk about that some other exactly. time. Exactly. We're talking about how the idea of being pro-life, remember, the right to life is a statement in our founding document. It states the proper relationship between human beings and the government. And it says that the government has a duty to protect the lives of the governed. The founders said that the existence of the government comes from the lives of the governed and not the other way around. It derives its just powers from the fact that every human being's life has inalienable rights endowed by their creator. That's an amazing idea. It's the foundation for all of what makes America great. That's what we're talking about right now. And how can we restore it? Well, you can. And it's through elections. We're going to come back and we'll join Karen. She's telling us about the mistakes that pro-life folks make in trying to get the perfect candidate instead of just a very good one. It's very important you be ready for this battle. We'll be right back right after this. You're listening to Life Matters. Assisted suicide has been legalized in California. People can be killed by a physician without having any psychological testing. This is a very dangerous situation for the emotionally vulnerable or if someone has been given a diagnosis. Please prepare this coming November 18th at Biola University. Come to the conference Caring, Not Killing. Find out what you can do. Go to caringnotkilling at wordpress.com. Caring, Not Killing, Biola University, November 18th. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. We're your program on life, culture, and the very real battle of ideas. I'm talking to Karen Cross, and Karen has been telling us about some of the mistakes that well-meaning pro-life people make when it comes to this battle and getting good pro-life legislators elected. Karen, could you go over again these points, just recapitulate the mistakes that well-meaning people make and it actually holds back the cause of life. Okay, so some of these things are just common things people do in their zeal to protect life that actually would help defeat pro-life candidates. One of them is to fall in love with your candidate. You need to make sure that if your candidate, say, loses in the primary, that you support or back with all your effort, all your might, the pro-life candidate who can win. Yes. And then believe that your candidate is the only real pro-life candidate in the race and bash other pro-life candidates. That weakens support for the candidate who does actually win the primary. Yes. So in other words, your okay. candidate may not be the one that's going to hold office. And right. right. Yours, yours may not be the one who won. Expect the candidate to make abortion a top issue in the campaign. No. We need to keep in mind that there are not even 50% of people consider this issue in voting. So right. they need to appeal to a broad range of voters in order That's to right. win. There's a lot of other issues but out there. Yeah. Another one is vote for a third party candidate who has no chance of winning. We need to remember that when a third party candidate gets into the race claiming to be the real Mm pro-lifer, he actually pulls away voters for the candidate who can win. And it's a sure way to elect the pro-abortion candidate. Some folks may not remember this, but it was actually H. Ross Perot that elected Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton did not get the majority of votes in the United States of America. He got the plurality because the Republican Party vote was split by Ross Perot. That's how we got the Clintons. Right. So I just want to point out a few things because I've been talking about what not to do. Right. So what can somebody do? Because we need, you know, 2018 is almost here. It's unbelievable. You know, the end of the year is bearing down us and it's going to be 2018 in just a short few months. You can educate yourself on the issue. Yes. Subscribe to NRL News Today. You mentioned NRLC.org. Mm-hmm. If you go to NRLC.org, you can actually subscribe to NRL News Today and educate yourselves and share that information with your pro life friends. Network with your local chapter and yes. your state right to life, and you know, with with you in California there, encourage voter registration. I don't yes. know the laws, for instance, in California. Different states have different rules as to how you can register, but make sure your your pro-life friends and family are registered to vote. I remember even holding a voter registration drive in a little church in West Virginia, and 15 people registered to vote that day. Hmm. Well, two of those people were the pastor and his wife, wow. and they just hadn't made it down to the courthouse when they moved to become the pastor in this new church. And so we make it simple when we can take the voter registration to them. Yes. Most states have online voter registration, and it can be found actually on the NRLC.org website. 
in the Legislative Action Center, there is a way to go in and register to vote on almost every state in the nation, except for maybe New Hampshire Mm -hmm. on that site. And then making sure that you remember to vote yourself and Mm -hmm. encourage your friends and family to do the same. Give them rides that day. Find out what kinds of things are going on in California to get the information out. You sometimes have things that you're doing in these targeted races. They need to find out from you or from National Right to Life, from me here at the national office, what listeners can do to make an impact in their local and in those congressional races. There are actually a number, at least maybe a dozen in in California that are vulnerable races that we need to protect. And um, what we need to do, too, is to encourage that pro-life candidate. I've met candidates who actually have said abortion is not going to be an issue in my campaign, Mm. right? But they're pro-life. And at the same time, they're saying this Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion provider, and NARAL, NARAL Pro-Choice America, and Emily's List even, a pro-abortion PAC, women candidates who support abortion on demand and using taxpayer dollars, that sort of thing, for abortion, they're attacking the candidates with messages yeah. that they talk about, like these candidates are dangerous for women, and we need to we help need to that candidate them, understand right. because our candidates, the that's pro-life right. candidates, are the ones most Americans would agree with that are that's doing right. protective things like the Pain Capable Unborn Child that's Protection right. Act, that's while the, the pro-abortion candidate generally supports abortion on demand. Mm-hmm. They're the candidate who is extreme. Abortion on demand for any reason using taxpayer dollars for That's abortion, right. not protecting babies who can feel pain. Those are the extreme candidates that we need to expose That's right. and to protect our candidates who want to protect life. That's right. We're going to have to wrap up. I think it's very important what Karen ended on. You have to explain to people what choice really means. You have to tell people what a pro-abortion candidate, and they are pro-abortion, It is about abortion. It's not about terminating a pregnancy. It's not about women and women's rights. And that's been demonstrated in 2017 with Planned Parenthood. They don't want to help women if they can't be doing abortions. And President Trump has told them, look, well, I'll give these funds to groups that will really help women. They won't kill their babies. So this is about killing a human baby. And if it's not talked about at your church, if people buy into the dominant media culture, you're going to have a harder time. So make sure that you have pro-life speakers that come to your church. Don't wait till election time to educate people. And if they get lost in other issues, bring them back as to why the right to life is the essential right of our nation. And it's your job as a local pro-lifer to do that. Karen, thanks so much. You always bring a lot of light and insight to the right to life cause. We're really appreciative of you. Yeah, Brian, I've always felt that political action is actually a ministry to the unborn. And for all the babies out there, and the moms, we need to prevail. We have to win. That's right. Karen, thanks so much. We'll try to have you back again soon. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of National Right to Life.